Thank you, Jerry, for the testimony. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be in the house of the Lord? Yeah. 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 Amen. Uh, just a quick reminder, the church opens the doors every single day. Um, you saw the hours. If you have a need of prayer, counseling, any, any problem, you just come. Actually, the church is open for everyone who wants to come. You don't need to belong to the church, but if you come, you'll find people who will be with you, supporting you, and praying with you. Amen. Amen. And as uh, we advertised, um, we do have a prayer going on um, during the week. On Tuesday, it's intercession, intercession prayer. Everyone is welcome. Wednesday, Friday. It's not only for some people, it's for everyone. Yes. I was very encouraged by one person who uh, came to uh, uh, the church uh, two weeks ago for the first time. I always meet the newcomers, the visitors, the guests, I always meet them. So I was discussing with the, the person and then immediately I, I could feel that our spirit were connecting. And then she told me, um, I want to come for the Tuesday um, uh, intercession prayer. This is the first time you're coming Sunday on Tuesday. you already jumping in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. That really touched my heart, encouraged me. So if you have been coming here, I always say after two visits, you are not a visitor anymore. You are not a guest anymore. I'm bringing down to just one. Amen. Amen? <laughs> after your first visit, you are a member. You can sing, you can do whatever you want. Amen. Just it's up to you to come forth and say, I want to do this. Amen. Amen. This is the house of the Lord. This is your house. Yes. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Um, 2019 is a year of fruitfulness. So that is our focus uh, for now. Last Sunday, I spoke about sowing and reaping. And I will continue on the same topic. I, I told you uh, when we got this vision of fruitfulness, uh, I was very excited because not everything went well in 2018. So I needed an encouragement. I needed something. But the more I, I saw the picture that we have there, that is the picture I had in the back of my mind. So. I pictured my life that way. But God rebuked me almost immediately. The more I was thinking about it, the more God was showing the work that I have to do together. I was not discouraged because the end was fruitfulness. But I had to put some work in it. And that's the reason I've been pre preaching on planting, sowing, Watering before we reap anything. Hallelujah. Amen. You may probably not like it, but you cannot jump to reaping if we did not sow anything. Amen. So it's my responsibility to remind you that. Amen. Amen. At the beginning of everything in the first book in the Bible, immediately after God created a man, he said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, I give you seed for the provision. It's all about seeds. And then when you read further in the Bible, in the New Testament, Galatians chapter 6, verse 7, you will see that it is based on what God had said in Genesis 1. Amen? Because God says... Men's harvest depends entirely on what they sow. Hallelujah. Amen. What you reap depends on what you sow. You can sit down, think, project, and do whatever you want. As long as you don't stand and sow something, there will be no reaping. So that's my mission to remind you that. So this morning, 
I would like everyone to examine your life. Just picture your life, what you have accomplished, where you are at. Some will like what they see. Some will be proud of themselves. But others will be questioning themselves. I'm here to tell you, if you do not lack how your life turned out to be today, you probably, not, you probably need to start sewing differently. This is not a joke. Every time God gives, gives us a vision, we see the result almost immediately. Hallelujah. Remember Grace Revolution for 2018. We have seen a mother who has been looking for a child for four years and who grabbed the vision of 2018. And in 2018, finally they got pregnant. We believe that it's connected to the vision that we had. Amen. Last week, I was talking about sowing and reaping. And I challenged people to reach out to others. What you're looking for, you have to sow it in other people. <coughs> Hallelujah. I saw one lady coming to me with a check in her hand. Yes, sir. It was not my check. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. It was her, her own check. Someone was just, um, give, I just gave her a check saying, I want to sow in your life. Yeah. Go put your name. That's it. Yeah. Just right after the service on Sunday. Brothers and sisters, whatever you're looking for, start sowing in other people's life. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not going to tell you who to go to. If I do, I will send everyone to me. <laughs> Just kidding. But God will talk to you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm saying that your thoughts are seeds, your words are seeds, and your actions are seeds. Amen. Amen. So, I would like everyone really to understand where we're going, to understand this fruitfulness. If we sit, we don't do anything, we will reap any, uh, zero, nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We live in a world where people, uh, p many people here are very educated, sometimes way too much educated. <laughs> but yet, we follow trends. We follow what other people do. It's very important that you listen when we stand here. Because we do not say things because it just come to my mind like that. I'm a very focused person. Yeah. When we have a vision, I stay on the vision. I make sure that I understand the vision very well. And I make sure everyone understands the vision. Because the vision is not for me alone. Maybe a little bit for me too. But it is for everyone. So if you understand really fully what the vision is and where we're going, you will have no problem following and then getting to something. Today we, we're receiving testimonies about first fruit that happened in January. For us, that's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatsoever we sow, that's what we're going to reap. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So I was saying, it started with first fruit offering in January. Let me tell you, we were very impressed. Cross point, we're doing good. Amen. Hallelujah. We're doing good because we are obedient. Obedient to the voice of God. Amen. 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 I like see, hearing people connecting with me. Amen. Amen. Because of first fruit offering that we did in January, because of our faithfulness, our obedience to the word of God, I feel free to declare that we will reap in 2019 Hallelujah. 30, 60, and even 100 times what we sowed. Hallelujah. It's up to you if you believe it. It's up to you if you grab the vision and you walk with it. Hallelujah. Yeah. When I said that whatever you sow, it's what we're going to reap. Everyone think all the good things I've been sowing, that's what I'm going to reap. 
Amen. I said last time, we have to balance things. When you saw something negative, guess what? God respects his laws. He is going, you are going to reap many negative things because there is a multiplication that happens. There is a miracle there. If you are hoping for a multiplication in everything you saw that is positive, there will be a multiplication as well. Ah, oh, man, there will be. So we have to be careful here. That's the reason I think for me it's very urgent that we teach. So today I will be teaching more than preaching. We have to teach ourselves to think, to speak, and to act the words that actually are going to change our lives positively on the indiv individually and corporately. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how it starts. Galatians 6, 7 says, we will reap what we sow. There is no doubt here. I want to make sure about that. There is absolutely zero doubt. Because that's a, a command that came from God's mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. So regardless of what we do, we can pray for you. We can do everything that we want. But it takes you to stand up. You to do something. Amen. Because you are in charge of your destiny. Yeah. We can give you seeds. But if you do not plant them, yeah. guess what? Nothing will grow. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. So your words, your thoughts, and your actions are seeds. Not only for yourself, but for your entire family as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Every seed produces out of his own kind. Good, many goods. Bad, many bad. That's the way it is. If you need healing... Go pray for another person who is sick. Forget about yourself for a minute. I know you need healing. Go pray for other people who are sick. If you need money, do like the, the other person did for our sister last Sunday. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I know it's kind of difficult. Eh? <laughs> it is complicated. Many people will say, oh, you, you better save your money. Put your money in a bank account. But sowing and reaping is saying something totally different. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We spoke last time about planting in a good soil and the water, whatever you have planted, persistently, when you do what you need to do, you, that will produce a harvest that is blessing from God. The only time that you won't be able to reap anything, it is the time that you have not been serious either in planting, you did not choose the good soil, or you did choose the good soil. But you are not being putting enough water. You are not consistent. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, you will reap if you faint not. That means the devil will bring a bunch of things to discourage you. Yes. Hallelujah. A lot of things just to, for you to give up. Because once you take a seed, you put under there, you see nothing. Maybe for, for weeks, nothing. You just locate the place, you put water by faith. You have no clue what is going on down there. Maybe this thing is just dead and that's it. You have no idea. And that's what God is asking you to do. Keep pouring water and let me do my job right. hallelujah right. our nature pushes us to give up quickly when you don't see a result you give up but I'm asking you to continue to do that don't go dig and see if something is happening okay no 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 just by faith put water and just wait Amen. hallelujah Amen. That your seed needs time Needs time to grow. Needs time to germinate and spring up. Hallelujah. Amen. So the key here for fruit, fruitfulness is to understand God's law of sowing and reaping. Hallelujah. Amen. After planting, you wait. And when you wait, there will be a multiplication. You will be surprised. Amen. 
There is, in the, last week I told you about Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 1, to, talking about a season. There is a season for everything. So you have to wait God's time. You have no control on the time. You have no control on the productivity. But you have faith that God will bless you. Amen. And then in a wedding, you do not stop putting water. Putting water could be praying. Praising the Lord. Amen. The book of James chapter 5 verse 7 said, Wait patiently and expectantly. Do not grow weary. Do not be desperate. Hallelujah. Amen. One day, a little long time ago, um, I told my wife, you know, we have this money. Maybe we should trust this brother and, and do business. Uh, because the, the brother was good in doing investment and stuff. So we took the money we gave to the, to the, to the guy. And then he connected me online. I, I could see how much money I'm making. He went up just a little bit. So I was excited. I was praying every day. I check. It's going up. But now for a long time. And then it started going down. I called the guy, I said, okay, it's kind of pointing down. <laughs> he said to me, that's how it goes. It goes up and then, and then down. Actually, you have to wait like for a year or two and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. I think I was not prepared for that. <laughs> because if it goes down, the next morning, I'm hoping at least to see it pointing up. But it was not. Actually, it was going down and down. Okay, so I prayed. Uh, I have to be honest with you. My prayer was dollar for dollar. I gave you 20, I need my 20 back. <laughs> the multiplication thing was already gone. <laughs> so I was praying, God, okay, well, just give me back my money. <laughs> you know, dollar for dollar. You know, that's what I need. And it did not happen. And at some point, uh, it was just way too much. I called the guy and said, okay, give me, give me my money. The, the remaining of my money. <laughs> Hallelujah. I did not even wait like three months. <laughs> and the guy was saying, now you have to wait one year. One year, I will have zero. Because when you get to zero, and then they ask you if you have more money. No. No, no, no. So I stopped the thing uh, because I could not just, um, you know. No. In the beginning, you are excited. And probably today, you are very excited. And tomorrow, you worry. I'm asking you to believe and be consistent. G give it a try for one year. Amen. Now three months. <laughs> But seriously, while you are waiting, water, water, speak words of wisdom, pray, remove from your mouth some words like bitterness, you know, jealousy, gossip, unfaithfulness, unforgiveness. Those things will come and will choke your seed. And nothing will come out of it. You have faith planting, but you cannot wait. Every time someone says something, you jump on them. Where is your faith? Fruitfulness will push everyone to live right. God cannot multiply for you something if you are not living right. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was my introduction. Today we'll talk about sowing in our family, sowing in our children. Hallelujah. Amen. Sowing in our children. Believe it or not, raising a child is like growing vegetables. I should take another example, but that's the, whatever came to my mind. It's like growing vegetables. 
That's why I'm talking about sowing and reaping. The principle is the same. When you're planting a seed in the ground, it is the same as when you're planting a seed in your child's life. Today you plant, and tomorrow you will reap. But we only reap what you planted. I know that the world we live in is very difficult. Let's be serious, it's really complicated. It's getting out of control. So finding a good soil where to plant is almost an impossible task. When you turn on the TV, you will hear stuff you cannot even imagine. Long time ago, guns were used by soldiers at a battlefield. But today, even mentally challenged people can buy whatever they want. The battlefield has moved from a place where people don't live. When there was war, they did not come in a city where people are doing stuff. They go fight somewhere else. They make sure there is no civilians here. But today, the battlefield moved to places where civilians were safe. Today, we're talking about schools, churches. Those places where, sure, you walk in, you do whatever you need, you need to do, and then you go. But that's where we're killing the most in our cities. And the country is not under, under war yet. There is no war. But we create just that war within the country. Hallelujah. So things are becoming very difficult. And parents don't know what to do. Some of them are about to give up. When you look at the studies, you will be shocked. Most parents do not believe that their children will at least carry their values. Impossible. Just think, picture your own children. And then ask yourself, is my son or my daughter going to carry my values? Things that are important for me. Amen. Hallelujah. Most Christian parents are not even sure about the salvation of their children. They are not sure. Studies in, in churches, in Christian families, have shown that the majority of our children, they lie, they cheat at school, some are on drugs, they choose to do the wrong thing. Even at a young age, Without any problem, they disobey, they talk back to you. Without any problem. My wife and I, for years and years, we opened our house for children when they are apprehended by the police. When there is a trouble in the family and the police apprehend kids, they can bring the kids to, to me. So I have had many, many kids, all ages and all colors in my house uh, because uh, I'm a trusted person, I can take care of them. So I have seen everything and I know very well what I'm talking about. One day they brought to us a small baby. You usually don't take small babies because we work, we're very busy. And then they brought us a small baby who was three. Um, you can imagine at that age when a, a small kid is apprehended, a, a, the, the child is very disturbed. But it took just a couple of days for the child to find their balance and smile, and, and it's an adorable uh, child. And I went to my, um, in my, uh, uh, I went to take a bath, and then I went to my closet, and then I found on the ground uh, candies, a lot of them. 
And in the middle of that chaos, my three, my three old boy was eating candies. Actually, he, he gave me some too. <laughs> I had no idea where he found the candies in my house. I had no clue. And then I saw the kid. I don't understand. I asked my wife, do you know where the child is? Uh, my wife said, the child must be playing in, in, in our room somewhere here. I said, okay, come see. I said, eh, so how did he find the candies? <laughs> eh? So he has been in my house for three days, <laughs> okay? And he's able to, it, it, it looks like the, the candies have a smell. <laughs> and he was following the smell. I could not understand anything. I grabbed all the candies, put it in a box, and then put it on a shelf where the child could not reach. In my closet, and I closed the door, and I said, okay, please don't do this. Um, I have no clue how the candies got there. Probably we had a lot, and then we did not want the kids to, to eat them all because they are able to do that. And then they become hyper, and that's not good. Yes. Um, it did not even take an hour. I was looking for the, the child again. <laughs> he was nowhere to be seen. I said, okay, okay. Let me just go check. Once again, he was eating candies. I do not know how he got the intelligence of going on top of the shelf, bring that thing down, and eat. Yes. This is a child who cannot even go pee in the bathroom by himself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. What I'm trying to say is, we do not teach our kids to do wrong. We do not teach our kids to lie. They were born that way. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were, you are parents. What is the day you sat down and you started uh, teaching your child how to do the wrong thing? <laughs> Never. But you spend all your time reversing what the child has been doing, teaching the right thing. That means from the beginning, they were born that way. <laughs> they are smart yes. to do the wrong thing. Yeah. But they are not smart to do the right thing. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you let your child decide what to do by themselves, they will choose without any hesitation to do the wrong thing. Because it's just natural to us. We're coming from there, by the way. Amen? Amen. <laughs> I know I'm talking to parents, and this teaching could be a little difficult. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we always think that we're best, my family is the best, the best in the neighborhood, especially if the neighbors are not uh, Christian. We, we're doing the right thing. My, my kids are the best. Amen. Let me give you another example. One day, one lady kept criticizing the neighbor because the neighbor's uh, laundry that she has just um, uh, cleaned looked dirty. And then she was saying, she doesn't know how to do the job. I don't understand. She could buy a, a wash machine. I, I mean, I don't understand her. You know, when it's summer, you put your stuff outside so that you save some uh, electricity and stuff. So she could not understand why your laundry is always dirty. But she did not say it to, to the lady, but she was talking to her husband. Over and over and over, criticizing the neighbor. And then one day, I think a miracle happened. She looked through the window. She said, oh, she called the husband, come see. I think she, she got what I was saying for, for, for a very long time. Look, what is white is really white, and the red is red. What happened? And for the first time, the husband said, actually, I cleaned our windows. <laughs> Amen. My windows, I clean the windows 
That's the reason you see everything clean, perfect. So the problem was not the neighbor. The problem was her. Okay, your windows were dirty, not the neighbor's clothes. Hallelujah. We always think that we're okay, we do the right thing, and when it comes to kids, man, don't even go there. Many, many parents would not accept that their children are doing the wrong thing. They call them to school, it's a fight. You have seen videos, kids playing soccer or other things. It started by a small little things, and then the parents jump in, they punch the, the referee, because they believe that the kid is doing the right thing, and the referee is wrong. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. If you try to speak with those kind of people, they may fight you too. Proverbs 22, 15 says, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. But the road of discipline will drive it far away. Okay, I need to read another version here. Okay. <laughs> Children just naturally do silly, careless things. But a good spanking will teach them how to behave. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I think I prefer spanking between rod and, and spanking. I, I think, okay, okay. I'm, I'm not saying anything. I'm not telling you what to do, right? Uh, I, I have to confess here. I have never spanked my, my daughter, who is my youngest. Not even a tiny little thing. It's unnecessary. Ever. But when she does something wrong at school or any place, she is the first to come and say, Dad, I think today I did something wrong. It's because of the communication I've had with her since she was a sm even her brother, same, si since they were small. I just talk to them. When I'm not happy, they know they hurt my feelings. They come to me and they apologize. So no need for road, no need for anything. But we understand what the Bible is saying a little spanking sometimes, you know, will put things in, in place. Amen. 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 Uh, today we're talking to parents. Well, okay, I did not say go home and then no. I did not say that. Okay? <laughs> eh? They must love, and you will see that spanking has no place. Most parents, some parents, I have to change that, are very stubborn themselves, as I just demonstrated with the example, they think they know everything, they are on top of everything. They always do the right thing, and you know nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I really love you. That's the reason I'm talking about this thing today. Here in church, we counsel parents, we counsel children as well. Some children do not like their parents. Okay. They hate their parents. For very simple thing. Because some parents do not listen, do not pay attention to the children's needs. Times are different. What you liked when you were 12, 13, 14 is different from what your children are doing today and like today. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are a father or a mother who like to give orders, commands, you yell, you punish to get things done. If really affection is missing, you labor in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, you will get things done. But your children will not respect you. Actually, they don't respect you. They fear you. Uh, so you are confused between both two. It is not because they do what you ask that you think they obey me, they, they respect me. No, they fear you. So they do what you want to be in peace. Until they grow up a little bit. Until they have some muscles. 
until they become a little bit independent. They're rebels. They, they disrespect to you, even in front of people. Hallelujah. All of this is because we did not understand some principles and we did not follow them. I'm not here today to tell you how to raise your children. Hallelujah. I'm just here today to say your children will do exactly what they saw you doing. Hallelujah. Some of us, we're doing what we saw our dad doing because they were all morals. And then our dads were doing what their, their granddad were doing. And so on and so on. If you keep going back there, and then you look at their lives, some of you here, your parents, had multiple women, kids here and there. And you really believe that's an example to follow? You respected them because they were hard on you with their rod. And then you followed. And then without thinking about it, you're doing exactly the same thing with your children. Amen. Amen. What I'm asking you to do, to do, what you need to give to your children is godly examples. Amen. Not what your dad was doing or your grandpa was doing. It, it could have been okay, even good. Okay, I'm not disputing that. But we're Christian. We follow what the Bible tells us to do. If you display Christian values to your children, that is exactly what they're going to display too. If they choose to do things differently down the road, that is their problem. Because they will, they will reap what they themselves are sowing today. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a lot of things that our kids cannot learn at school. They will only learn by watching you, by listening to you, your character, they will not learn that at school. Your behavior, hallelujah, everything they see you doing, they will not learn that at school. Amen, yes. Hallelujah. Amen. What you should be displaying to your children and that your children should be learning, it's courtesy, courage, Discernment, generosity, gentleness, patience, persistence. Those are the things. Self-control, wisdom. Those are the things that we need our kids to learn from us. Those are the things that are not taught. They are caught. They will see them and then they will go in their brain. They will start doing the same thing without even knowing Hallelujah. Amen. If you sow a seed of love, a seed of care, in your child's today, what do you think will happen tomorrow? They will reap a character of confidence, Amen. maturity. Hallelujah. Just because they saw you doing the right thing, not copying what your grandpa was doing. He was probably a good man. We Christian, we follow Christian principles. If you saw in your children encouragement, even if they did not do well, you encourage them, you'll do better next time. Actually, what you have done is good. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will reap confidence tomorrow. Encouragement literally is like a water that you pour on a dry plant. A child who is not doing well, encourage the child, encourage, encourage, and then you will see what the child is able to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But if you choose to continually finding fault with your child today, that will develop in a very poor self-image for themselves tomorrow. Amen. Amen. I know you're quiet, but this is important. Mm -hmm. Sowing and reaping, if we understand it,
fruitfulness, it won't be only money. It will be every single thing, including our family. Amen. That is where we're going. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to talk about another subject. You understand that children, it's my area. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I wouldn't open my house if I did not have love to give. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beside my engineering school, my accounting school, my um, ministry, kids are my interest. Abuse, the brain, those are the things that I understand easily because I spent hours and hours and hours studying. We live in a world that people think that abuse is only phys physical. Hallelujah. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Some parents think that because you close your door and then you start fighting with your, your, your spouse and the kids are outside, kids will not be impacted by that. Hallelujah. Kids are able to catch the right thing, but they catch very quickly the wrong thing too. Witnessing violence between parents is a very strong risk factor of transmission of violence between one generation to another generation. Your grandpa was beating up grandma your dad is doing the same, guess what? You will do the same too. If Christ is not in the middle to cut those generational tires, generation, generational uh, patterns, you will do exactly the same too. Today, I want to just say that abuse, any form of abuse, Destroy brains, kids' brains. Amen. Amen. And then will cause all kinds of behavior that we see today. A child who was all fine, no problem. At school, the, the, the teacher says something. The child goes home, takes uh, dad's Kalashnikov, comes back to school to fix the problem. And then you wonder what happened. There is so many other things that you could have done. And then you don't understand. It does not come from the child. Most of the time, it comes from the parents who did not do the right thing, who did not sow the right seed. The parents, too, are victims as well. Because one time they were a child. Brothers and sisters, we're here to stop some stuff. We're here to stop some generational patterns that are not done allow, um, align with the, the word of God. Amen. That's our role. If we understand, we're going to stop them. So tomorrow, your kids will now go find a gun to do some stupid things. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So abuse is not only physical or sexual. It can be neglect. Emotional. Hallelujah. Amen. Most people don't understand that because there is no contact. When you lock your room and you yell at your wife, your child is on the other side. There is no contact. You did not beat them up. Hallelujah. But yet, they are impacted the same way. Amen? There is no contact as well when you verbally abuse them or put them down, intimidate them, terrorize, you yell at them, you insult them. What you're doing, you're damaging their brains. You probably don't know, but you are damaging their brains. I, I did not want to talk about brains, but let me talk a little bit about brains. A brain of a child who is three years old as, as big as your brain, you adult. Same, pretty much. 
The difference is the connection. There is plenty of cells. They are connected because of events since you were a child. If it's a joyful event, it connects. And then the, the, the brain remembers, oh, this is joy. Why do you laugh when someone makes you laugh? Why don't you cry? Because your brain knows, ah, this is actually funny. And then you laugh. Amen? A child who has been abused, some cells will never be connected. They will die. If you see the, the picture of a brain of a child that is normal, and the child that has been abused, all kinds of abused, even verbal, even just put down, you cannot do anything in your life. The, the brain is kind of sick, it's small, it never developed. Those are the kids when they are put in a situation where other kids will think about other solutions, that part of their brain is already dead, cannot think. They go grab, the first thing they see, boom, 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 boom. Because they have no other thinking possible. The brain, that part of the brain that produced that kind of thinking is dead. Because the wrong seed was sown, uh, um, sowed in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Kids are affected by what they feel. Okay? It could be someone is beating them up or the, the, the impression or they, they are not loved. Right? Or as well what they hear and then what they see as well. <coughs> Parents who knowingly or unknowingly are doing these things because in your family you yell when a child does not do what they're supposed to do you beat them up hallelujah what you don't know you are sowing something really bad what you're gonna reap is monsters murderers pedophiles child molesters that's how it started with the parents who did not look after them appropriately, who did not sow the right seed. And the problem is, we read the law that says each seed will produce from his own kind. So that child will reproduce the same thing. So the, the children will be the same too. Yeah. I gave you the example last Sunday of the Jukes family. On Five years of study, a family in New York, 1,200 descendants. Just because at the beginning, the parents were sowing the wrong seed. All the descendants, everything went wrong. Malnutrition, murderers. I mean, you look into the family tree, there is a, no one finished school. 1,200 people. Hallelujah. Sow the right seed in your children. So no need to close your door and yell at your spouse. Or no need to fake that you love your, your spouse in public. While at home you sleep in a separate room, kids are smarter than what you think. They don't need any picture or any explanation. They know, they feel, they sense. You cannot fake it at home. They know. And I'm telling you today, your kids are affected. Hallelujah. Do you understand the fear of a child when you are doing Jackie Chan in the room? <laughs> eh? The child, I mean, it's terrible because they fear everything. Divorce is on everyone's lips. But do you know the... the the impact on your child. It will develop insecurity. Every time you yell, it develops something. Every time you ignore the child, or you ignore your spouse, it's called silence treatment. You don't say anything. Hi, honey. Nothing. You don't respond. But the child is right there. The child sees. 
When I go for counseling, I always ask if we could go somewhere else. Because I don't want kids to be there and listen to, oh, this person is saying that, the other person is saying that. You think they are small? They quite don't understand what is going on? But I am telling you, they do. Even before a child is born, the child can be already messed up. Some people went to, um, how do you call it? Uh, uh, when you take a, ch- a small child um, from another family to raise the child. Adoption. That's okay, you know, the baby is just born, okay? <laughs> it's my baby, I'm going to raise them my way. Well, well, well. The baby comes with something already. Yes. Already. Yes. Already. I know what I'm talking about. Yes, you're going to raise them up. You're going to do something. But if the nine months did not go well, the child is carrying something that you cannot fix. Yes. Jesus. Hallelujah. I have seen a a true story of a a grandmother who cannot stand kids. And then she did not know how. She went to the doctor and then she said, okay, I don't understand. I, I can't even touch my grandkids. I can't. When I see them, I, 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 don't, I, I don't love them. I don't want to see them in my house. And then when I'm alone, I don't understand why. Because I'm miserable. They did the research. It's all the brain, okay? And then they discovered that part of her brain, because of how she grew up, was dead. Cells were not connected. They said, we want, we want to do an experimentation with you. We will put a, um, a battery in your brain so that that part of the brain that was dead will receive enough electricity, enough power. And then we will see how it goes. I have seen it myself. It's true. And they had a remote control. When they switch on the, the, the battery, power that part of the brain. And the grandma will ask for the, the grandkids. Oh my goodness, she will jump on them, kiss them. If they switch off, she will drop the kids. The brain is complicated. Don't think your child is too small to know things or too small to interpret things. They can sense, they can feel, but that will destroy them. You may cause something, probably not knowing what you're doing, but will have an impact on that child their entire life. I'm talking about a grandma who did not understand what was going on. Just because something went wrong, the wrong seed was sown when she was a child, and then see the result. Everything you do, everything you say, will affect your children one way or another. Oh, I'm too busy. Go, go see your mother. Don't you see? I'm, I'm, I'm working on something. Get out of here. Close the door. <laughs> or consistently you're praising one child while you're ignoring or criticizing the other one. You will never amount to anything. Some parents do that. Why can't you be like your brother? Don't you see that your brother study? What are you doing? TV, iPad all the time? I'm going to switch Wi-Fi off. (laughs) It's probably good to do that. But don't compare children. Hallelujah. One church member, long time ago, the mother approached me and said, okay, we need counseling. It's okay. What can we do? What is going on? So, okay, my husband does not like our our daughter. Uh, Why? We don't know why. He says all the wrong things. 
He's telling the daughter, you are useless. Okay. It's really heartbreaking. So I ask her, how is she doing in school? Oh, she's doing fine, but all of this is kind of difficult for her and for me too. Okay. So why? How many kids do you have? They had three kids, I guess. All of them were daughters, girls. And then he wanted a boy. From the beginning, he wanted a boy. So he's saying, we have girls because of you. Which, which actually is not true. <laughs> the sex of a child is determined by the father, yes. not the mother. Yes. Okay, I'm now going to teach on that. <laughs> yeah, just in case you were wondering, the father, not the mother. Yes. But my friend did not know or did not care about that. <laughs> All that he knew was, I only have girls. He wanted a boy, and he has girls. And then in his mind, from his education, whatever he has learned back home in a village somewhere, women are useless. So at, uh, at least I knew that. So I went to, to the home. A fantastic person, a beautiful family. The child, the mother has had just a um, a fourth uh, child who was a boy. You could not even touch that boy. The father was doing things unknowingly because certain things are deep in you and you have no control of them. They are controlling you. So I sat with him. I said, okay, brother, you have to man up. This is your daughter, your eldest daughter. You treat her as your eldest daughter. From today on, every single week, you have to bring her to the movie. If she likes movie, she said, Daddy, let's go to the Cineplex. There is a whatever movie. You bring her. You really have, you, you have wasted all your life. Now you have a child, no confidence, and you, you even don't know what you have created. But you still have time to reverse that. Hallelujah. So we spend time talking, teaching, for him to understand and accept that child. And he did exactly what we have done. Amen. The result was simple. One time, we were still at Center Street, whatever place, I don't remember. <laughs> and, and, yeah, <laughs> it has been a long time ago. <laughs> And I saw the kids were coming and dancing and playing and running around. Among them, I saw that lady, that, that girl. She was probably 13 and 14. Oh my goodness, she was jumping. You could see joy in her. You could see a transformation in her. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Total transformation. Just because of the red seed that the dad has started sowing. Yes. Brothers and sisters, when you sow good, wrong seeds, you will harvest wrong seed. If you add good seed on, on it, you will harvest good seed too. Yes. But you have to know that everything has a consequence. While you're going to, to, to harvest, you will have to take care of the, the wrong seed that you, you have sown, that, that you... you that's your choice. You saw the wrong thing, right? And then you'll have good too. Enjoy the good, but the wrong will be there too. And I hope that the good will be more than wrong just to balance. And this is very important for the kids. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Studies are showing that when you sow the wrong seed in your children, Many children will experience PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. I am very serious. In what? Fear, anxiety, yeah. all the time. Difficult focusing in school. Every time there is an exam, 
the child cannot do it anymore because of the level of anxiety. When a child is exposed to you beating up their mother, the, 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 the possibility for that child to be aggressive toward other people and toward their own wife or other people is really, really high. A few years ago, we counseled a couple. The, the, the guy, a young couple, was beating up the, 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 the wife. I mean, I've never seen such thing. I could not even imagine that it does exist in Canada. And then we go there, they seem to be normal. But when we get home, the, the wife will call us on the phone. Crying, yelling, running all over the place because the guy has lost his mind. And then we, we, we tell her, call, just call the police. Don't call me. What, what, what can I do? Yeah. And then we ask the guy to come to our place. I ask Apostle to help. Trying to understand what's going on. Why do you behave this way? And the guy, we, we, you know when you do counseling and stuff, you go really deep in, in, in the past. Mm -hmm. Because that's where the problem is coming from. Yeah. The problem was simple. This young man has experienced in his, in, when he was a child, the, the, his mother was beating up the dad. Okay, I know you guys are laughing, but <laughs> that is exactly what happened. So much that the father will run in the neighborhood and the mother will be behind the father doing all the crazy things. And the father will never touch the mother. All the kids were looking at them, seeing everything that was happening, especially my friend here. That created a problem in him that he did not know he was carrying a disease. He, he had no clue until himself got married. When there is a tiny little problem he does not know how to talk, how to communicate. He does not play his role of the father in the house. He grabs his wife, and there we go. There was no way to stop him. Impossible. So we understood one thing. In his brain, he has said to himself, what I experienced, what I saw my mother do to my father, will never happen to me, ever. As soon as this lady that I love says something wrong, it brings him back when he was a small child and he's expecting his wife, right, to grab him and do whatever his mother was doing to his father. So in advance, he reacts to something that even his wife does not even know has happened. Without knowing, he reacts, and then he becomes violent toward her. That's how far we went to clean that thing up for him to become a normal person. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Whatever your kids see you doing, affect them. And can even destroy their brain. They will be acting crazy without even being able to control why they're doing what they're doing. Hallelujah. Amen. All of those problems, all the fights, create emotional problems like depression. A person is messed up, depressed, unable to do something. When you go back into their life, you found out what happened. Hallelujah. They worry. They don't want to go to school. They withdraw socially. They don't want to mingle with other people. Or they complain about uh, uh, pain or illness. They're not connected to anything. 
a person will go from one doctor to, an, to another doctor because of a, a, a severe pain somewhere. But the doctor will never know where it's coming from. They will give you a painkiller, pain uh, something to control your anxiety and stuff and stuff. But the problem is not there. The problem is somewhere else. And we as parents, we are the source of most of those problems unknowingly. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, the child at school, you know, the achievement is very poor. Or oh, the child does not want to go to school. In my house, I'm sorry I'm taking too much time, but I think this is important. Amen. In my house, one day I got a child who was about eight years old. Does not know how to read and does not know how to, to write. Very messed up. I cannot go into details because of confidentiality and stuff. Really messed up. But messed up where? Here. Because the child looks normal. He can cry, he can jump, he can, he can laugh, he can do everything. Unless, until there is something that triggers a different reaction. The child did not have confidence, nothing. At school, it was just terrible. I went to his school, and the teacher, I wanted to work with the teacher to understand what's going wrong with the child. And they showed me where the, the child sits in school. There was a wall around the child, and all the other kids were sitting like where you are. And my boy was sitting here, and there is a wall, so the child cannot see others. Because he was distracted, he will throw things at the kids. He will try to get everyone else distracted. Why? Because he was unable to focus, concentrate, and get something done. First of all, I told the teacher, I don't want to see this wall anymore. The child has to be able to see other kids. We're going to work on him to regain confidence, and everything, but there is something that you guys have to do. We went to Toys R Us, we purchased these uh, toys with the letters and, and numbers because he did not know how to count, he did not know whatever. And then because he, he did not want to know, because it will take him time to, to learn something that everyone knows. And then people were laughing at him. So because of that, when they are teaching other kids, he does not know, he, do, he doesn't want to listen. Because when you listen, it becomes a commitment and everyone will discover that actually you don't know anything, they will laugh at you. So he will provoke a problem so that he does not learn. At home he was safe. So everyone, all the kids will come and then we put all the letters on the, on the fridge. We, we, you know those letters with magnets. Three months, one, two, three the child was able to read and write. Amen. Three months. He started writing his name all over the place. So I spent my time cleaning all the walls. <laughs> and then we started hi hiding uh, pens and pencils and crayons. I mean, it was forbidden to have those things in the house because we could not control him. He was happy. He would say, so this is mama? We say yes. Oh, and then he will say his name. He was extremely happy. When the child was stable enough and now at school there was no problem, he was behind everybody else, but he, he was able to do something. Uh, the child had to, to move and then go back to the parents. I don't know what they do with the kids. I have done my job. Yes. And, <laughs> amen. I did not need his bed anymore. We had to tear that down. And then I figured out that he had, he, he had a pencil hidden under his bed, a place that I did not know. And then he was going under there to write under the bed, a place where I could not get. So if any single place he could write, he was writing his name, dad, mom, and his name too. Aww. Hallelujah. I'm happy about that because it's an achievement. 
So you understand the seed I'm talking about. Hallelujah. Amen. Seed, it's not only money. It's so many things. Yes. And the law of multiplication, sowing and reaping, will apply. So last week we were talking about the parable. I'm going to the end here. We understood that the, the seed were thrown. Hallelujah. And each will produce a different result depending on the soil. My question to you parents, where are you sowing seed in your children? Where? Is that a path where everyone can pass by and step on your seed and the seed will die? Is that a rocky ground? Is that within the thorns that will grow up and choke your seed? Or a good soil? A rich and a good soil? What is your choice? Some parents here are just taking kids to, to church and they believe that's enough. There is probably hope that it will turn out okay. But today I'm telling you Speak words to your kids because the word of God is life. The more you speak God's word to your kids, you are sowing the right seed in your kids. Amen. Hallelujah. The goal of a person who is planting a gardener, a farmer, the ultimate goal is to plant seed on a rich soil. They spend time doing all the work. They make sure they plant at an appropriate place so that the roots will establish, will go deep in there and will not be washed away by rain or by anything else. Hallelujah. Will not be easily removed. But it takes time for that thing to grow. You too. Do not measure on a daily basis the progress of your child once you have prayed for them just one time. You just sow the seed. You water every day by praying, by sowing these good words, and you leave everything in the hands of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Because the Bible says the return is good fruit that the child will bear in 36 and even 100 times. That's the goal. Some parents are too controlling. Too. Actually, they want the seed exactly that they planted to give an, an outcome that they want. There is no farmer who will plant oranges and the next morning when he sees that uh, actually uh, apples, uh, the price for apples is going up every day. I just plant oranges. The that farmer, if he goes and he prays and he prays, says, okay, God, I need a miracle. I, I need apples. You will not get any apple. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have planted oranges. You will get oranges. Right. Hallelujah. So don't be too controlling and telling the seed exactly what kind of plant that they have to become. Just pray for your kids. Say those words that will empower them. And leave everything in God's hands. But some other parents are too lax. They do not create a condition for the seeds to, go, to grow. But other parents who are listening to me, actually, they will go find a good soil, and that's where they're going to plant their seeds. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 22, 6 says, Train the child in a way he should go. When he grows will not depart from it. So train your child with affection. When you're correcting them, because it will happen, just display love. When you display love, even though you're correcting them, they will resist less. They will resist, but less. Yes. A child is like a borrow in which you're pouring knowledge. It's slowly it's step by step, precept upon precept. Hallelujah. If you do quickly, you want your child to turn out something good tomorrow, think about that bottle, you're putting something too quickly in it. 
It will all go on the ground. You're going to lose everything. Hallelujah. Amen. If you sow fear, like the parents who are yelling at the kids, I'm going to kill you, and stuff like that, you will reap lack of influence over your own child. You won't be able to influence them because you just opened the door to lies, hypocrisy, secrecy. Be careful, brothers and sisters, what you do and say in front of your children is exactly what they're going to do. Your children want to see you as an example. But your actions should not contradict your counsel. Don't say one thing, and then when your wife says something that you don't like, oh, yeah, yeah, Jackie Chan, I immediately. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I know this is heavy. But I need to say it. There is no way we can reap fruitfulness if we don't start in our own families what we do, what we say. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a say that says, who sins in front of a child sins double. Because you sin for yourself, yes. but you just transfer something unknowingly in your children. So be an example. Show good temper, example of diligence, charity, kindness, humility. That's what your child will copy. Brothers and sisters, you choose what to sow. It's up to you. I can only give advices, but what you choose to sow, it's you. You could sow weeds. If you want. And that's what? Neglect. Everything is self-centered. You can sow anger and impatience. But you can choose to sow, to, to sow love. Patience, tenderness, compassion, joy. You can choose to, 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 to sow prayer, blessings. Hallelujah. Amen. So what are you go going to sow in your family? And this is a job for men and women. It's not only the father who is there who, to carry everything. I know that God has placed, has placed has on husband's shoulder immense responsibility. He has to lead the family. He has to lead everyone. But in gentleness, in love, the responsibility that God gave you, it's not a mandate to, to use a road, you know, to be selfish or... You, you see what I mean? It's, it's love that you have to display. But the role that the mother plays is very essential. The husband will never be able to, to be a leader if the mother is not helping. Hallelujah. If the wife does not cooperate, does not help, if they are not getting along, even if the husband is like this, the husband is handicapped, and the family will reap sorrow, disaster. Hallelujah. Amen. I would like to finish by saying, perhaps fruitful conversations never took place in your family. Everything we're talking about today, you never heard them from your parents. It is possible. Probably some of us were neglected. We're not loved. We're rejected. We're abused. Sexually, physically, emotionally. It is possible. Today I'm, I'm asking you to bring all the burden to the cross. Amen. Bring everything to the cross. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. It is possible to start fresh from today on. Amen. You just have to think about everything you have been doing. Even if your children has, have grown up. If you, if you think and you remember all the wrong things you have been doing 
and saying to them, give them a call. Just say, I just realized I've been doing, I've been sowing the wrong seed. I want to start fresh with you. Because it is in their mind. They love you, everything is okay. But they're going to repeat the same thing you have been doing. Bring to the cross your burden. And God says, I will give you life and I will give you life abundantly. It is not too late to create a different dialogue in your family. A rich dialogue right now. Fruitfulness, it is not up to you only. You have understood what I have been saying. Your role is to plant and water. But God comes into the equation too, to multiply. So whatever you sow today, God will take care of it and will multiply too. The book of Psalm 127 verse 1 says, Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor over it in vain. Unless the Lord watches over a city, the watchman stays alert in vain. Hallelujah. Amen. When God builds, he uses his own material to build your house. His own material. If he does not build your house, if you have used your own material, or whatever you got from your parents, God's love is missing. God's patience is missing. God's forgiveness is missing. Actually, you're missing a lot of things. Gentleness is missing. Faith is missing. Today, I'm asking parents, do an examination. Do not tell me the result of your examination. Go back. Think about your life. Think about how you conduct your family affairs. Think about how you talk to your kids, especially the little ones you think they don't see you fighting, they don't see you responding to the husband or wife. Especially those. Adults can handle things, but kids, no. Hallelujah. Amen. Go back home, think about all those things, and take a decision. If you have been neglected, or everything has happened to you, it's not too late. You can bring your own situation to the cross too. Say, okay, this is my past. This is what I went through. I do not know if it has any incidence in my actual behavior. So help me, God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what I had for you today. Amen. Amen. Let's stand up as we're closing. Before you go, make sure you say hi to your neighbors, the people you don't know, and the risk to ask them their needs, risk to sow something in their lives too. Hallelujah. Because you're going to reap what you sow. Amen. Amen. Let's close our eyes today and put all our situation in God's hands. God, today we recognize that we have been, we have not been sowing the right seed. Hallelujah. We did not know. But with your teaching, Lord, now we know. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for showing us the way. We are asking you today, Lord, to remain a lamp at our feet so we can see where we are going. Hallelujah. Let our life moving forward please you. Please you. Hallelujah. Father, today we say, forgive us for every wrong seed we have been sowing in our children unknowingly. We did not know. We did not know. Unknowingly, we have created monsters. We did not know, Lord. We are asking for forgiveness today. And we, ask, we are asking for your intervention. Hallelujah. 
to stop the bleeding, hallelujah. Stop the damage that we have caused without knowing, hallelujah. Every bad word that came from our mouth, we saying sorry today, Lord. Forgive us. Replace that with something better, something good, where we will demonstrate gentleness, peace, love, joy. Oh, hallelujah. We want our kids to know you. We want their life to count for eternity. Hallelujah. We bring the life of our entire families in your hands. Hallelujah. You and you alone can build a house that will stand. Will stand despite the season, despite the time, despite the weather. Hallelujah. We're putting everything in your hands. Hallelujah. We're taking a commitment today. Lord. Our thoughts will change. Whatever we say, Lord, will change. Our actions will change and will match your word. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, take over. Take over. Take over. So that the devil does not come to discourage us. To steal the word in us. I'm asking you, Lord, to build a shield around every congregation member. Everything that they have received from this word, hallelujah, protect it so that it produces fruit and fruit abundantly tomorrow. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Have an excellent Sunday.